What's going on, guys? Big Clive 34 coming at you this week with Classified Finds episode number two, where we dig into the interesting and obscure stories that can be found in classified finds from around the world. This episode is not sponsored by eBay, Cars.com, Auto Trader, CarMax, any of those, but it could be. Y'all are playing. Let's see those ad dollars. What's up? DM me, guys. All jokes aside, Last week, we talked about uh, time capsule cars. This time, I'm kind of a little bit curious about what it would cost to buy a movie car. Let's say I wanted to buy Dom's Charger from the Fast and the Furious, or maybe even uh, Eleanor, even though Eleanor's controversial as hell now, and people are getting sued over it, and it's another video that I'm gonna put in the description, actually. So we have a couple of options when we're looking at movie cars. We have three different options. I'm sure the movie buffs will probably hit the comments and correct me here. So we have our hero cars, which are the good looking ones. They're complete. They have an interior, they have an exterior, they have an engine and it's all clean and it looks good and, and they're pretty, but they're not gonna do the action shots in these cars because that's what they have the stunt cars for, which are going to be very close looking, but they won't be a complete car. They might have a roll cage, whereas the hero car might not have a roll cage. They might have racing seats and harnesses so they can sling this thing around. And then last but not least, we have our replica cars, which obviously speaks for itself. People go and build their very own version of a movie car which you know I thought that the replica car part of this video would be an afterthought but it actually ended up being pretty interesting hopping into the first one here we're gonna talk about Eleanor so Eleanor is the most controversial car on this list in one of my recent videos we actually discussed how one YouTube channel had their Eleanor uh, recreation repossessed by the copyright holder, whole controversial situation. Link to that video is down in the description below. But if I wanted to get a real deal, like Hero Car, the original like promotional car used in the movie, uh, what would I pay? Keep in mind, this movie was 2,000th in IMBD's ranking of you know people looking it up. Just to give you a general idea of the framework here, uh, how over time these movies remain popular, and that should determine somewhat the popularity of the cars. But top 2,000, uh, and the thing about Gone in 60 Seconds is there's only really one car that anybody cares about. Obviously, the Eleanor Mustang. There's a lot of awesome cars in that movie. Nobody really remembers any of them, right? So what did the hero car sell for? There were apparently three hero cars used in the movie. And in 2009, one of them brought home a whopping $216,000. $216,000, that's like right around the average price of a home in America. So imagine spending that on a car that was used in a movie, but that's not where it stops because there's a plot twist in this story. Of course there has to be. The story of Eleanor is multi-layered and there's lawsuits and people throwing shade at people and all kinds of stuff. So the next layer in this is that four years later, I believe it's hard to kind of trace these cars because the information isn't abundant on them, but I believe the same car sold just four years later for $1 million, which... $200,000 is a lot of money, but a million dollars is a lot more. As far as I could tell, the same hero car went to auction again and made $800,000 just four years later. That's that's basically like getting the same price of the car, $216,000, like $200,000 a year, and then profiting that. Just imagine being on the losing side of that one, like selling the car, and then you see it sell for a million four years later, man. I would not want to be that person. But here's the plot twist, okay? So I told you there was three hero cars. In this 2013 version of the car, uh, it seems to insinuate that the other two versions of the car were destroyed in filming. So in reality, there's really only one Eleanor hero car in the entire world. We all thought there was three. Perhaps that is what happened and why $800,000 in value got added to this thing between 2009 and 2013. Because if it goes from three of a kind to one in the world, that's pretty crazy. Then the same car again in 2020 sold for uh, $852,000, which again, 
we would expect it to appreciate a little bit, but since the economy was starting to tank here in early 2020, um, one of the most sought after cars in the movie car industry sold for eight hundred and fifty two thousand dollars the market beyond the hero car is expansive though and it's kind of unique and a little bit odd so basically most of these cars from what i gather are built off of fastback mustangs and if you get just a regular fastback mustang at auction a nice-ish example seems to be going on the high end for like 80 to ninety thousand dollars seems to be the going rate I found two examples of the Eleanor Replica, which sold for 161000 in 2019 and 137000 in 2019. Now, you would think that with the Eleanor Replica cars that they would have some discrepancies. Like some will be perfect replicas. Like you see this in other replica cars. Some are perfect replicas. Some might not be exact because it's very hard to recreate the exact movie car. However, it seems like the whole reason kind of behind that lawsuit that happened with B is for Build is because, as far as I can tell, they try and license every replica car so that every replica car is an actual, very, very close, if not exact, replica of what's in the movie. Moving on, so we told you that the uh, Gone in 60 Seconds was right outside of the top 2,000 in most popular movies on IMDb just uh, in terms of who has searched for it the most. The original Fast and Furious, amazingly, has maintained its status in the top 500 over the past 21 years at this point. It's kind of crazy to think that that movie is that old. Oh, yeah, and by the way, guys, just real quick, if you want to head down, hit that like button if you're enjoying this video so far. Very much appreciate it, and while you're down there, maybe you want to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. You know, saying this almost annoys me as much to say it as it probably annoys you, but it's kind of a part of the job responsibility here on YouTube. So uh, with that, back to what we were talking about. It's kind of hard to find these cars. Surprisingly enough, I would have thought that I would have Googled it and immediately come up with Dom's Charger and uh, Brian Supra and probably a lot of other cars. But they don't really, I can't find them. They weren't really around. As far as I can tell, the original, original Dodge Charger from the first movie is in a museum. And there's not really any sort of idea of value or sale of it anywhere. In terms of appraised value, who really knows what that car would be worth? Because arguably, it might be one of the most iconic movie cars of all time. That and the Supra, I mean, it doesn't really get much bigger. Guys, we can argue about which movie is the best in terms of car movies, but I don't think that there's any argument as to which movie just basically dominates the rest in terms of people who know about it, attendance, household name status. So, we find uh, the 69 Charger... I believe 69, right? Yep, 69 Charger used as the hero car in the fourth and fifth movies, which obviously aren't going to be as big of a deal as the first one. But it is a hero car. It is super clean. Uh, when you keep in mind that on a bad day, a 69 Charger is probably going to bring forty to $50,000. This number actually seems pretty reasonable. The hero car goes for a whopping $97,500. So for about hundred grand or so, which is a lot of money, but this car is less expensive than a lot of exotics. You can hop yourself into Dominic Toretto's Dodge Charger that they were finally willing to part ways with. Next from the Fast and Furious franchise, you know where we have to go with this one. If you're a Fast and Furious fan, you already know what's coming next. Up next, we're talking about a Paul Walker exclusive being linked to Paul Walker. Obviously, a massive deal. Uh, tragically died, became much bigger after he died. That's generally the way those things kind of work, though, right? Um, so the orange Supra in the first car, if we want to talk about iconic scenes in automotive media, the Charger and the Supra, no matter how corny you think the Fast and Furious movies are, those two cars racing through the, uh, the railroad tracks is probably one of the most famous scenes in automotive cinema in the history of automotive cinema. So this is the car that was used in the final race, the actual car. Like, imagine that. Like, as a car fan, as a Fast and Furious fan, being able to use the actual machine in that scene. It went up for auction and did sell at Meekum back in 2015. 
And keep in mind, it's 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 a stunt car, so take that for what you will. It is a very good-looking car, so the, the lines are kind of blurred here between hero car and stunt car. But as you can see from the pictures here, we don't really have an interior, and uh, it's used for beating around a little bit. So the outside looks on point, but the inside, not as much. So this car sold in 2015 for $185,000, which is a crazy amount of money for a stunt car. But when you consider the amount of history that this car has attached to it, and, and you know, it's just pop. This is like the definition of pop culture. Like, this is what pop culture is for a car guy. Imagine being able to walk into the garage and see that thing just sitting there because I wouldn't drive it. It's probably one of the cars that you couldn't put on the road. You might be able to. Don't quote me on that. A lot of these, again, details are fuzzy, so we're going to leave that one where it is. 185K. Moving on next to one of those realistic cars that some people could probably figure out a way to afford. If you really, really wanted to add a movie car to your garage, it's not for sale. It's sold. These are sold classified ads or sold auction ads, if you will, because most of these high-profile cars go to Barrett-Jackson. But this does appear to be the the Hero Jetta. Because the movie was low budget, these secondary cars, normally they'll have a couple of them just in case. Or they'll, they'll build a couple of them and they'll take some more chances. But the Fast and the Furious, nobody expected it to be big. Like, it was a low budget movie. They had to really stretch money out. And having all these cars was an expense. A lot of the cars were people's actual cars. They had, like, casting calls for people to to be background, uh, to be extras, and their cars to be extras. So it was really making the most of a budget. So at the time, this might be the only Jetta. Uh, it's just cool, man. For those who are trying to ball out on a budget and grab themselves a movie car, this particular car sold at Barrett-Jackson uh, This particular car sold at Barrett-Jackson Scottsdale 2016 for $46,200, which is pretty much the price of, you know, a lot of average uh, middle of the road cars these days. Granted, a 95 Jetta is probably worth about $2,000 if it's not linked to the Fast and the Furious. It's just a really cool car. It looks very clean. You know, it's complete. Uh, there's not really pictures of the interior, which is weird. I really don't want to deep dive into this one uh, because there's this is just like a peripheral car, but there's a really interesting caveat to it. So we're talking the Yanko Camaro from Too Fast, Too Furious. Again, a car driven by Paul Walker in Too Fast, Too Furious. Uh, I believe it is the hero car. Again, not a lot of details on how exactly it was moved, used in the movie, but because it looks so good, I would believe that this is the hero car. Uh, it did sell at Barrett Jackson, Las Vegas. But the strange thing about this is, as far as I could tell, it was sold two days before Paul Walker passed away. Or at least Barrett Jackson that weekend ended two days before Paul Walker passed away. So imagine, uh, by the way, sold for $37,400. So just imagine being the person on either side of this transaction to buy or sell a car, and then you go on to learn two days later that Paul Walker passed away. It's just, it had to be a crazy feeling just to be a part of that moment for one. And I know that you're not thinking about money when somebody died, but in a situation like this, <clears throat> granted, I don't think that this particular car would skyrocket in value because Paul Walker touched it. Like it wasn't like a major component. That's actually a really good idea or a really good deal. I feel like for a Yanko Camaro in the first place, 69 Yanko, 37.4 that seems like a really good deal even if it wasn't linked to fast and furious or paul walker um but imagine buying that car knowing paul walker drove it and then two days later he's gone or selling that car talk about the opportunity to have sellers regret uh the next car <clears throat> linked very much more to paul walker we're talking too fast too furious evo uh these are the cars that made a lot of us including myself ricers for a short period of time where I thought, you know, big fart cannon exhausts and decals and big wings and neon underglow were cool as hell when these movies came out. Looking back, it's just like it's it's a very nostalgic and valued part of my past that I'm glad is a part of my past. I still like neon underglow, though. Fight me. Anyways, this car went to auction again at Barrett Jackson, also likely a hero. Cool part about this 900 miles. So I feel like this was basically a new car that had been driven probably exclusively pretty much by Paul Walker and the stunt team and ended up going to auction Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2014. Very cool. Just so much nostalgia in this one. 
ended up bringing a grand total of $46,200. So if you guys aren't getting the picture here, there are some cool movie cars that are, you know, $40,000 is nothing to scoff at. Like, it's still a good chunk of money. But knowing that you could buy one of these cars for forty grand, you know, because you kind of think of them and you're like, man, they have to be like at least $100,000, $150,000 each. Some of them actually aren't that bad. So you can only imagine, I didn't find a ton of Fast and Furious replica cars for sale. I guess they don't pop up that often, but you'd have to imagine that they're probably like twenty, thirty thousand dollar cars, if that. You know, um, granted, you can get the original for forty k. If people are even building too fast, too furious replicas, I don't know. Anyways, uh, there was one car <clears throat> on this list that completely just blows the others out of the water, right? Um, almost to the point where it's like I don't even know where to place it. But before we get to that, let's talk about the two quick bonus cards that I thought were too cool to ignore, but they don't really justify a long, drawn-out description. First, uh, the 1967 Pontiac GTO from the Triple X movie, which was super corny, but again, a movie that I really liked. It kind of like falls right in line with the Fast and Furious level of corniness, but it's the kind of corniness that attracts you. Maybe it's more quirkiness than corniness. Uh, 67 GTO for sale or sold for $28,600, which Palm Beach 2011, even at the time, seemed like a very, very good deal for a 67 GTO. Those cars are pretty damn expensive. Uh, anyways, I did dig into it, and it, it was. It seemed a little bit too good to be true, and it did end up being a little bit too good to be true. Uh, the car did, did have a scrap title, so basically... It's a rolling paperweight. It's a piece of artwork more than a car. Uh, it's impossible, at least legally, to turn a scrap car into something that can be driven on the street. And uh, I'm not encouraging you to do anything illegal. But if somebody were to have a 67 GTO that was totaled, that didn't get reported totaled, and they just so happened to pull the VIN tag off of that car and put it on this car, you could put this car in the street. Again, not suggesting you do something like that. Saying people do it all the time, though, because this car does have a functioning small block Pontiac, uh, automatic transmission, power brakes, power steering, uh, all kinds of stuff on it. It's a running driving car. Anyways, uh, very cool car. Very uh, much a piece of, again, if you're a fan of that stuff, very much a piece of history. Having a 67 GTO would be cool. Kind of sucks that it's a scrap title, but I can see why. Looking at this car and how they modified it, definitely a case of them not wanting to get sued. One more before we get to this like super outrageous car that's way beyond all the others on price. Uh, we have a replica Shelby Cobra that, again, is a paperweight, but essentially the car was used in an Iron Man movie. Kill power. And was destroyed as Iron Man fell on the car. So I just kind of like part of me pictures this car. It's like if I ever had like endless money and a big mansion with like, you know, I just picture walking in, wrap around staircase up to the top, and then this paperweight of a car just sitting in between the stairs. Maybe, you know, a little display of the scene it was in. It's just kind of cool piece of uh, another piece of pop culture. More like a lot of these cars play more like pieces of artwork than they do cars. So you like tend to gravitate straight toward thinking about them as, okay, this is a replica Cobra and these things bring X amount of dollars if they're totaled like this. But it's more or less like you kind of have to think about it like a piece of artwork, a piece of pop culture history, more so than a car. If you guys haven't figured it out yet, uh, also in the top 500, a much, much older movie that a lot of people are probably familiar with, has been in the news a lot lately, is The Dukes of Hazard. Came out in 1979, still a top 500 movie. I don't think we need to talk that much about why I think a lot of people understand. For those of you who have been living under a rock, though, it has to do with the Confederate flag on the roof. Now, before all of this controversy and back and forth and people arguing, the car did sell at auction for almost $10 million. Let that sink in. It sold for 
nine million nine hundred thousand five hundred dollars on eBay. So this was back in the age, I believe the car sold, yeah, 2007. So this was back in an age where it would have been really easy to fool a bunch of people in the name of a publicity stunt or in the name of jacking up the value of this car. Um, but it, it was believed to have sold for about $10 million. Apparently eBay stopped the bidding at like $6 million and they required people to validate their accounts, which still like kind of makes it a little bit more legitimate, but doesn't bring like a whole like, yep, this is definitely legit picture to the equation um you know the guy who owned it john schneider who was Bo duke i believe uh he basically told um i should have this quote in front of me basically he told tmz it and i quote it just proves that when you clean out your garage be very very careful about what you throw away so did this car actually sell for 10 million dollars it, it kind of appears that way but it could be a false bid you know in any uh case be sure that if you ever come into a General Lee that you make sure you know what it's worth. Not that very many people are going to do that, but these days, with all the controversy surrounding it, who knows? This car might be one of the most valuable cars to ever hit the auction block in the future if it ever gets sold. Just because it's like a weird, like, kind of blackballed, I don't know what you call it. It's a weird kind of car that just might bring a lot of money. So that's about what I got, guys. Thank you for tuning into the second episode of this Classified Finds. Uh, did you see anything on here that you would want to buy yourself? Which one of these listings stuck the most with you? Which piece of this information surprised you? What do you guys think of the Classified Finds videos? Thank you for joining in. I appreciate you liking this video, commenting below, and uh, subscribing, hitting the bell notification icon. It's been real, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Big Clive 34.